Hello everybody! Hello everybody, how are you? A cloudy day here in Beverly Hills. Uh, taking time out to shoot some videos, uh, specifically this series on communities in the LA area. Spotlights on different towns, neighborhoods, and we've been doing a series lately on communities just east of downtown LA, for example, Monterey Park, Montebello, and others. This video is going to be about Santa Fe Springs. Santa Fe Springs, such an interesting community, goes back and uh, plays such an important role in the LA area. A spring was uh, discovered in the late 1800s and for a l very long time uh, attracted many people to the area for health purposes. It could sit in the spring and get rejuvenated, but that wasn't all that was discovered in Santa Fe Springs area. Uh, the land turned out to be the perfect, perfect place to raise cattle. And for a long time, there were tens of thousands of heads of cattle in this area. It's a big ranch. Of course, the whole area, whole area was uh, formerly ranchos. And so a lot of the ranchos had cattle and then oil was discovered. And millions of barrels of oil have been pulled from the ground in Santa Fe Springs. And then later, it became the site where one of the most iconic uh, cars and race cars in, ra in auto racing history was developed, and that's the Shelby Cobra. So let's talk a little bit about it. I mean, uh, Santa Fe Springs, you had this fella that came from Santa Fe, New Mexico, and he set out toward Los Angeles because he knew that bottled water was going to be one of the hottest products uh, through the 1900s and into the next century after that. So he knew that he had to find a spring that had natural water that he could bottle and sell in his, uh, he was a medicine guy. He's one of these guys that went around and sold elixirs and anything to help you with your joints, your rheumatism. And, and let's be honest, a lot of those elixirs in those days were mostly alcohol. And he knew that that was a limited, that those were going to be uh, restricted by the government. Laws were going to come into place, health rules, the FDA. He was looking for the next venture, and that he knew was water. And so he left Santa Fe, New Mexico, and ended up in the Santa Fe Springs area, named it after his former town, and he found a hot spring that not only that people could lounge in, that could play in and into the hot pools, but he knew that that natural clean water, he could bottle it and sell it, okay, in his traveling uh, medicine man wagon. And so that's how the city got its name, Santa Fe Springs. It used to be a health resort. And hundreds of people would come from all over the country just to get, be rejuvenated, to get a relaxing weekend, maybe a week. Sometimes they stayed a month, a couple stayed for a couple of years, and they just had permanent rooms. It's like these people that get a room, a retired rich people that get a permanent room on a cruise ship and just cruise all over the world. They never leave the ship. They just want to travel all over the world on the boat, and that's what happened for two or three of the rich people in the early days of the Santa Fe Springs. And so then, of course, he became rich, and then he sold off some of the land. Now, interesting, interestingly, a, a man approached him and said, I would like to purchase part of this land. And he said, I just need a little. You just need a little. Well, what did they consider a little back in those days? He ended up with 300,000 acres stretching from the Pacific Ocean all the way to Santa Fe Springs, guys. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, in those days, there was so much land. It's like Griffith Park here at north, uh, north of downtown Griffith Park in the Los Feliz kind of area. I mean, it used to be five times its size, and they considered that just a, a little park. And now it's, we look at it as a huge, it's huge. It's got golf courses and, and horse trails and a zoo. It's a zoo. But in those days, 
what it, what it is today would be just considered like a little plot of land, right? Because there was so much land, guys, and you didn't have you didn't have cars every ten feet like you do today. So then cattle was uh, the the cash crop of those days when the cattle kind of took over the uh, revenue leader from the health industry, although they were working alongside. In fact, in some of the health resorts in Santa Fe Springs, they worked the cattle into the uh, health routines. You could get on the back of a steer and ride around. And if you really wanted to get some exercise, they invited you to uh, be one of the people that held a red cape what, during what they called the bullfighting days. So you would go to a resort. They'd have the usual amenities. You could sit in the hot springs. But they also had theme nights or theme days, one of them which is was bullfighting days. And the idea was that you would stand in what a, a makeshift ring that they made, and they had stands for other people that didn't want to participate to watch. And they had uh, uh, so many bulls around from their cattle uh, operation that, that they would give you a red cape. Now, legend has it that a lot of times it wasn't even a cape. It was just a red towel, excuse me, a red towel from the... Uh, from the hotel, from the resort hotel. And they'd say, okay, we're gonna let the bull go and just dangle this cape in front of you. And then right when he comes up to you, uh, pull the cape back and he'll keep going. He'll miss you completely. Well, what happens? People lose their nerve. These are not professionals. These are regular people trying to lose weight. And they would start, they'd let the bull go and the their eyes of the health resort patron that's in there in the ring with the red towel, their eyes would get so big, and what do they do? They just start running for their lives. Well, what happens when you run for your life from a bull in a bull fighting ring? You lose weight. They were losing so much. People were losing so much weight running from bulls in the bullfighting ring at the Santa Fe Spring Resorts that it became very, very popular. Now... A couple of people got gored. But, hey, what's better story can you tell back east in Boston than you were fighting bulls and you got gored and then you take your shirt off and show them the big hole in your chest? I mean, that's a good time. And that's exactly how Santa Fe Springs developed in the early days. And then they discovered oil. So now you have these health barons that turned into cattle barons that discovered oil. I mean, there was so much money being made in Santa Fe Springs that they didn't know what to do with it. Because because really, it was really a rural area. So what did they do for fun? Well, they went to Palm Springs and played golf. They went up to San Francisco and uh, Vegas. They went over to L.A. and uh, went driving around in their cars in L.A., shooting guns in the air. But... I mean, they didn't have internet. They didn't have really uh, TV and radio until of any of any real consequence till later, because we're talking uh, middle of the 19, late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, uh, because they just did, couldn't get the reception out there. I mean, they had the media, they just couldn't get the reception. So what did they do? They would drive into L.A. And asked to go to the movie sets so they could see the movie being shot. And then they would go home and just tell stories of how they thought the movie ended. And then when they took trips to Vegas and San Francisco and saw the actual movie, they would compare notes and say, what do you think? I, I didn't think it was going to end that way, right? And how did they get on a movie set? How come you can't get it? Well, they were rich. And they just paid off. I mean, they was the wild times of the movie business. They said, look, I'll give you a hundred grand. Let us sit in on the movie. Let us watch how you're making Casablanca. And then we're going to go home to Santa Fe Springs and guess how it ends. Then when we travel to Boston, New York, Chicago, New Orleans, Las Vegas, San Francisco, and see the movie, we're going to laugh because we have it completely wrong. That's how they entertained themselves in the early days of Santa Fe Springs. Well, guys, I hope that helps. It's another look. We're going to have so much more on this community uh, as we go with these videos. We're going to talk about the food, the entertainment, the, the real estate, the how to meet people, how to meet cool uh, single people in Santa Fe Springs. There's going to be so many more videos. So come on back and we'll see you then.